In this episode, I'm going to tell you the truth about some popular pieces of gear that you absolutely don't need to be real overlanders. Don't waste your money on these things. Instead, invest your money in gear that really matters and that you're actually going to use. And on fuel to get you places. We have well over a hundred videos on our channel, all about overlanding, off-roading, camping, gear, and vehicle modifications. If that's what you're into, we hope you'll consider subscribing. Now sit back and enjoy the show. Mary thinks I'm gonna end up pissing off some people with what I'm about to say. I might, but I assure you that's not my intent. Through sharing what we've learned over our many decades of adventure travel, we hope to help you avoid many of the pitfalls that beginners and seasoned travelers oftentimes fall into. Believe me, over the years, we've wasted plenty of money on fads and useless gear. The first thing you don't need to be a real overlander. High lift jack. Look how nice and clean ours is. You know why it's so nice and clean? Because we rarely ever use it. Now that's not necessarily true. This is a brand new one. We lost the old one on a trail. Yeah, it, the bracket came loose and it fell off somewhere on a trail in Northern Michigan. Frankly, high lift jacks suck to use. And if you're not really trained on um, how to operate them, they can be extremely dangerous. Some people say that you can winch with a high lift jack. Don't winch with a high lift jack unless you are, again, super well trained on its use. Now everybody knows, or I hope so, that winching is very dangerous. Um, if a uh, shackle should let loose, a uh, soft shackle, or a uh, winch line should let loose, all the energy stored in that winch line is going to snap back and if you're in the way, it can kill you. That's why whenever we're winching, everybody stands way back out of the way. When using a high lift as a winch, you are directly in the danger zone and if something should let loose, it's going to smack you in the head. My advice, take it for what it's worth, don't use it as a winch. Now another concern with people is they lift their vehicle three inches and then they get slightly larger tires. So they think that their stock jack won't work anymore. Your stock jack, two by fours nailed together, there you go. A hell of a lot safer than using a high lift and a fraction of the weight. I slightly disagree with putting blocks under the stock jack. I think it's a little dangerous. There could be some slippage. Some people might just want to call AAA. Well, it looks kind of cool though, with all the holes and the handle. It's kind of burly. That's why we have one. Now, if you do get one or you already have one, be sure to get some training on proper maintenance and use of one of these things. Max Trax brand traction mats. Now, don't get me wrong. Traction mats do come in handy. Especially if you're a little stuck in some mud, snow, sand, throw some traction mats underneath a couple tires, get yourself a little momentum to get going, and it's a heck of a lot easier than pulling a winch cable. And they're excellent for leveling out your vehicle in camp. That way, if you have your stove on the back of your vehicle, all the grease in the pan doesn't go to one side. Unfortunately, a lot of people fall for Max Trax very clever marketing. But to be fair, they probably do have a better plastic composition, but they are way overpriced for what they are. Now you may have already noticed that Max Trax has a bit of a fanboy following on social media. You know the people who, who declare that any other type of traction mat is junk. Well, that is just not true. Now, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of feedback from that last statement I just made. And that's cool. If you disagree with anything I'm saying in this video, please leave a comment below. You'll be wrong, of course, but still, leave a comment. 
For years, we've used a different brand for getting us out of snow, mud, whatever, bridging gaps. They're holding up great at just about half the cost of Max Tracks. Don't throw your money away on Max Tracks brand traction mats. Okay, so they're not exactly throwing their money away. Um, <laughs> it, it, Max Tracks are a good brand. It's just that they're a little more expensive. Too expensive. Teach his own. Scottle. How did this ever become a thing? One day, some guy with nothing better to do took a plow disc, welded the hole shut in it, put on these big, clumsy, heavy legs, hung a cheap Coleman single burner stove underneath it, and gave it a goofy name. Absolute genius. Scottles sell like crazy. Why? I don't understand. They're big, heavy, hard to pack away, and they really kind of suck as a frying pan. To be fair, we've never actually used one. A lot of our friends have them, and they love them, and they use them for everything. A scottle is a walk. If you want to walk, go down to your thrift store, secondhand store, whatever, and buy yourself a walk and put it on top of your stove. Don't waste money on a scottle. Rooftop tent. Where do I even begin? Let's say your budget allows anywhere from $700 to $1,000 for either a ground tent or a rooftop tent. For that kind of money, you're not going to get much as far as the rooftop tent goes. Um, that's pretty much where they start. That's the bottom price range in a rooftop tent. And you get what you pay for. Now, if you were to spend that kind of money on a ground tent, you, cool. you, have, a, you have one hell of a ground tent. You'll have something that's going to last a lifetime that has really good zippers, totally waterproof, windproof. You get what you're paying for in a ground tent when you spend that kind of money. And rooftop tents, their price goes way up to $3,500, $4,000. That's a lot of money. That's too much money. Now, we've looked very closely at many, many manufacturers of rooftop tents. We've had our hands on the fabric, the um, how they're made, the seams, the zippers, and they're not made that well, to be honest with you. We have yet to find one that is worth, we think, that kind of money. Now, a lot of people get a rooftop tent because they think that they're safer. It gets them up off the ground, away from predators. Guess what? Bears can climb. They're very, very good climbers, in fact. Mountain lions, they can jump. They're really good jumpers. Raccoons, they can climb. Possums, they climb. Can skunks climb? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they do. But... If you're getting a rooftop tent to get you away from bears and mountain lions, it's not going to work. It's not going to do any good. I mean, I get that it's really cool. It's kind of like a tree house. You know, you, you climb a ladder to get up in your tree house and you go to sleep. However, what happens in the middle of the night when you got to go pee? You got to climb down this ladder. You got to climb back up the ladder and quite frankly that seems like too much of a hassle for what a, for what a rooftop tent is worth not to mention that we have two little dogs yeah i'm not up and down the ladder i'm not gonna carry them up and down all the time some people even claim that a rooftop tent is really useful because sometimes you just cannot find a level spot to put a tent when have we ever, and everywhere, we've been everywhere in the United States and Southern Canada. When have we ever run into a situation where we did not have a spot for our ground tent? Well, I can remember one time that it was uncomfortable in a little bit of a slant. One time. Um, and we were on a one game time. trail. <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, that, that part. In Canada. That part was not good. But that was one time. 
at any other time, we can always find it. Our tent has, um, well, the one that we use when we're car camping, it's seven foot by seven foot. We always find a, a decent, relatively level spot for it. We do. We do. Another thing is people claim that they are a lot faster to set up than a ground tent. Some are. The hard shell ones that just plop up, they probably are faster. But the soft top ones, they are not any faster than setting up a ground tent. I, we can have our setup. I she can, can she have can our have setup. our setup within what two minutes. Set up with the bedding in it. Rooftop tents tend to be less windproof than a ground tent. I think mostly because you're you're up in the air, um, right in the way of all the wind. You can't hide your hide the tent behind uh, boulders or a vehicle and such to that would buffer the wind from or you. anchor it down like we do with our ground tent yeah and think about it, it's way up on top of your vehicle and the wind comes and, and we've been out be like in a rocking chair we've been out home. in all kinds of crazy weather with Tornadoes. our tent and we've usually sleep right through it yeah we know that our tent is not going to blow down but the biggest drawback of a rooftop tent is all that weight on your roof. Most roofs are not designed, or I shouldn't say most roofs, the attachment points for a factory roof rack is not rated for all that weight on your roof. Not only is the roof rack attachment points not rated for that weight, but you're putting all that weight way up high on the roof, raising your center of gravity way up there. Now, we see in Instagram pictures of people with the big, heavy, huge rooftop tent, a big awning on the side, and then like 10 gallons of water in this shower tube thing. Oh my God, what are they thinking? That's way too much weight way up there. I'll tell you what they're thinking. They're thinking, I'm going to be clean and comfortable not like you ground dwellers. No, ground tenters. Eee, ground tenters. Eee. I got your ground tent. Okay, so this is one point where I actually agree with you. I know. I gotta write this down. <laughs> I gotta date this. I've never she been... She agreed with me. <laughs> I've never been 100% sold on rooftop tents. Yeah. Uh, they look cool though. They do look cool, and um, we we never want we never say never. There may be an instance where we may find a rooftop tent to be uh, more convenient. Um, Someone may surprise us out there with a cool design that yeah, I would, meets our needs. But right now, yeah, I haven't found yeah one. none that are built right now. I think are worth the money. Um, for one thing, yeah. if, if we were to get one, it would have to be a hard shell, and it would have to open up, you know, like this, with the hinge towards the front of the vehicle. Um, it would have to be super lightweight. I'm talking uh, carbon fiber. Why not? You're spending $4,500 on a tin. It might it be, damn well better be carbon fiber. Uh, but... Uh, and not one of these really thin ones because you can't keep your bedding in them and you can't have a thick mattress. We, we sleep on a, like a five inch thick air mattress in our ground tent. And, it's like... And I don't want all that wet stuff coming in on the mattress, you know? Well, with a hard shell, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we'd have to have it thick enough to where we keep all our bedding in it, pillows included. Um, otherwise, why have, a, why have a rooftop tent? You might as well have a ground tent. They're, they're far more comfortable, far more windproof, waterproof than a rooftop tent is. In our opinion. In our and, ever so humble opinion. And as I'm aging, getting up to go to the bathroom at night. Yeah, she's, I might she's want, getting pretty fragile. With, <laughs> I, I might want an elevator or something instead of a ladder. Well, you could park next to a rock. Oh, there you go. And just climb the rock. Yeah. And, but yeah. Um, never say never. We may someday, if 
somebody can show us one that's worth it, we may get a rooftop tent someday. You know, we just ruffled some feathers with the rooftop tent. You think so? All in good fun, though. <laughs> Awning. I can't remember how many times in camp we've seen other people's awnings. A sudden gust of wind comes up and all of a sudden it flips way back, bends all the supports and all that stuff. But I still have to say I'm kind of jealous of some of them. They are really nice. They look nice when it's not windy. I'll often ask people who have awnings, you know, what do you do when it's really windy out? And their answer is, well, we'll get some poles and some lines and stake it down. Why not just use a tarp? Or they'll say, well, we just take it down. Yeah, we only use tarps. Uh, they work the best as far as we're concerned. We clip them onto the, either the side of the vehicle or the back, a couple of poles, some lines. In fact, we have a couple of videos on there. We do. Uh, search our channel. We've got two videos on uh, how to set up a tarp. But again, never say never. Never say never. One day we may find one that we like. Probably not. Never know. Don't say never. Because I think they're cool looking. They can be. Looks and function are two different things. We're not going out to take pictures for Instagram. We're going out to have shade and protection from the rain. Oh, by the way, we have Instagram. Look us up on Instagram and look at our pictures. A Jeep or a Toyota? Jeeps and Toyotas are probably the most popular vehicle for car camping and overlanding, but any kind of vehicle will do. Whatever you have will do just fine. In most cases. Um, we think that it should be four-wheel drive. It doesn't have to be, but it should be four-wheel drive. That way you can get into more places. And some of the forest service roads or BLM roads that you'll be going down are sometimes very soft or sandy. So four-wheel drive really does come in handy and a two-speed transfer case for any serious trails. For any kind of adventure or overlanding vehicle, reliability should be the most critical part. Before you go anywhere, check and change your belts, hoses, make sure you have really good brakes, the whole brake system go through. Make sure your battery is in really good shape. You do not want to have a dead battery when you go to start it in the morning out in the middle of nowhere. Probably one of the most common problems with vehicles is electrical. Uh, and most of that has to do with the stuff you add on. If you add on extra lights, stuff like that, or air compressor or whatever, make sure you do it right and fuse everything. Put a fuse on it close to the power source that, that it's drawn off of. Fires are very common with, uh, with homemade wiring harnesses. So it's important to do it right. How come I'm just finding out about this? Now, before you start thinking that you need your vehicle to look like the ones you see on Instagram with the full armor, uh, huge lift, huge tires on it, all you really need to start out overlanding or adventure travel, whatever you want to call it, are tires. Tires will get you there and get you back out. A lift, most stock vehicles, like a 4Runner or Jeep, you really don't need to lift them. And depending on, on what kind of trails you take, you really don't need uh, armor underneath them. If you're just taking forest service roads, you really don't need skid plates. The and, way you drive, we do. Yeah, well, the way we drive, of course. You've, you've seen some of the mishaps we've had before. If uh, Follow our channel, and you can see <laughs> Hit the subscribe button down there. Follow us on, on uh, YouTube, and you can see for yourselves the kind of trouble we get ourselves into. Anyways, and you don't need to steal bumpers. You don't 
need sliders or anything if you're just on four service roads. Uh, but you do need good all-terrain tires. And if your vehicle is a daily driver and you live up north where there's snow and ice, make sure that your all-terrain tires are rated for snow and ice also. Some aren't. Good tread on some all-terrain tires. Um, heavy sidewalls, I would recommend. Um, that way you can air them down safely. And airing down is an important part of going off-road or off on even on uh, washboard gravel roads, it's important to air them down to like 25 pounds or so. That'll give, sure makes for a more comfortable ride. Oh, it's much more comfortable with them aired down a little bit. You don't want to go at high speeds with them aired down like that. And you'll also need a portable air compressor that you can buy at Wally World or wherever. Just buy a cheap air compressor to bring, them, bring the pressures back up when you hit the highway. And you're all set to go overlanding. Now I'm going to tell you what you do need to get started adventure traveling or overlanding. And that is, you need to go over to Tread Lightly's website. We'll put a link to it below. And educate yourself on how you can leave the bare minimum amount of impact on the land where you're traveling and camping. That is crucial. And Google Common Trail Etiquette. Um, who has the right-of-way on, on narrow trails and such. And how to act in camp. Keeping the noise oh, level yes. down. Uh, no trash. No cutting of live trees. That is so important. Doing these things will give you a head start to becoming a real overlander. Much respect. Well, I think that about covers it. Hope he didn't piss you off too much. What? What'd I say? If you like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. In this video, I'm going to tell you the truth about some... Wait, there's a fly and it's got to go. You're up. I am? Yeah. Yeah, but with a rooftop tent, you're way up. You're, you're up off the ground. You're right. That's me. Hold on. There may be an instant where inst or inst instant instant in, in, inst there may be an instance where and should have forgot what I was gonna say. I was trying to help you there. I know it. Um, don't go away. <laughs>